Welcome to the video on the Step to Linear Servo Adapter. The Step to Linear is a adapter that allows you to run step and direction software like Mach 3 or others to an analog servo amplifier with a 0 to 10 volt input. The uh, Step to Linear ha is running on a 16-bit PIC DSP processor running in an internal PID loop with all the parameters accessible through ViperTune. On the board you've got uh, connectors for the encoder, the servo amplifier, the analog outputs to the servo amplifier, step and direction input from your controller, your PC or your breakout board or your controller, fault and enable outputs from the drive to signal a fault to stop your the controller goes back to the breakout board and and hits the e-stop or stops the controller if there's a fault and also an enable output that when the drive is ready it enables your servo amplifier. The board also can sense whether the amplifier power is on by uh, sensing the voltage on these two pins here. Also there's an RS-232 input for connection to your PC to run the ViperTune software. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to tune advanced motion controls brush type servo drive and also we'll also run a Copley brushless DC uh, motor and drive from the step to linear. There's an older model and a newer model of the step to linear. The older model, I used an 8-bit digital to analog converter and the new model I use a 12-bit serial digital to analog converter. So the new model uh, has more features and higher resolution. So if you bought it before spring 2020, you can send it back to me and I can upgrade it. So here's the drive here. Now on for testing, I've got a, uh, a connector here with a red LED and a green LED on the output. So there's the uh, fault output and here is the enable output. Now, so I'm simulating the low voltage from the amplifier here, the, the voltage sense from the amplifier, to tell the, to tell the S2L that the amplifier is on by running uh, the voltage from the power supply over to these two pins here. The 16 volts comes over to these two pins. So this is the, the fault output and this is the enable output that enables the drive. So right now it's showing a fault and it's not enabled. But once I apply the, the voltage to the low voltage pins on, sense on the amplifier, on the uh, S2L, it switches from, uh, no, uh, it turns the fault off and it enables the drive. So that would go back to enable the drive. And now my amplifier is locked. All right. If this is disabled, you can turn the amp. But as soon as it sees that, uh, the voltage come up, it will turn the drive on and close the servo loop. Now if you had it hooked up backwards and you uh, enabled it, the motor would run off. So when the motor is locked, that means you have it uh, set up right. You have the encoder polarity. On your encoder you have uh, ground 5 volts, A, the A channel, and the B channel. The differential A channel, differential B channel. So you got A, inverted A, B, inverted B. Now if one of those was mixed up, the encoder would count the other direction. So when you're first setting up the drive, you want to make sure that you can read the encoder. So here I have no connections to the amplifier at all. I have the amplifier turned off. I'll run it and then I'll hit connect. Now this is the terminal of the ViperTune. This, this sends the characters down the RS-232 and back again. Now once we hit connect here it sends a command to the drive, sends the V version command and it comes back with uh, version 5.2 S2L. Okay? Now I have no, nothing connected to the drive except the encoder the RS-232 and the power and this is just doing nothing over here other than displaying. Now, so what I can do is first thing I can do is hit read drive and it reads all the parameters of the drive. 
So what it does is it sends a few characters to the drive commands and the drive sends back the banks of parameters and it puts them in these little uh, in little um, compartments. All right. Now the CFD encoder is working. What we're going to do is hit start on the scope down here and as I move the, uh, the motor here you can see the encoder count is moving. This is the step count. There is no step connected, uh, step and direction connected, so it's not counting any steps. But you can see I can go plus and minus on the encoder, and that means the encoder is working. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how much many counts per turn this motor has. So I'm going to turn one full turn right to about there. And you can see this encoder is about a 2,000 count per turn. So the step to linear multiplies the encoder count by four, and those are the quadru those are the uh, the four times count. So that encoder on this motor is just a 500 line encoder with a four times multiplier, and that gives 2,000 counts per turn. Now I'm going to turn it all the way back and right back to zero. So, where my finger is about the same. So I'm counting, it was 2,000 counts per turn. So I'm going to count this way as positive, this way as negative. All right, I can go back to zero. Okay. Anytime you hit enable drive, it clears the count. All right. Now this is, uh, this is the display of the, the step, the encoder, and the error. And also there's a a little graphic display of your error too so you can watch it when the motor is bouncing around you can actually see it all right so i'm going to hit stop on the on the uh, the scope all right all right so i'm going to connect up now the amplifier power is turned off and I'm going to disconnect the power to the step to linear. I'm going to connect the uh, connector that goes to the amplifier. And on this amplifier, I'm only using the plus ref. Then the common for the other plus, minus ref goes to common. And that's it, pretty much. I'm not sensing any current from it, even though the wires are running. So I'm only using two wires to control this amplifier the plus ref and the common. And I'm now I will power it up with this, applying the power. And I'm going to turn on the power to the amplifier now. Now the amplifier is an advanced motion controls brush type PWM servo amp. Okay? And here I've got the, the motor's armature connected on this cable. On this cable I've got uh, 65 volts of power coming in on the DC. And this is a big size, uh, this is a motor off an old bridge port. So the motor is, is kind of mismatched to this power supply in this. It's a big motor and I've got a big heavy flywheel on it here. So the power's on to the drive. Now when I connect the uh, the low voltage sense up to the S2L to, to tell it that that's turned on, my motor is now locked. All right. So if I hit uh, start exerciser here, or start scope, you can see it's very loosely tuned, very loosely tuned. Very soft, okay. Here I'm gonna. This is the exerciser. What this is inside the step to linear is the uh, a little controller that moves the motor back and forth, so you can do tuning. If I hit start exerciser, the motor goes back and forth. You can see that. Okay. Stop exerciser, the motor stops. Now what this is is. To, in order to display across the scope, it continuously sends commands down the RS-232 in this little terminal window 
So this is all the activity going to the drive. So I'm going to start Exerciser. Okay. I'll actually speed it up to uh, velocity 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so it's really sloppy. Now this is the magnifier of the scope. That's the uh, horizontal, uh, vertical. And this is the horizontal. Alright. Now you can see the, tr the blue triangle is the step signal. Now it, it's internally generating its own step signal as a sawtooth or a triangle waveform. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now when it hits the end, it changes direction suddenly. So it, it's not small, it, the, it's a triangle. It's left, right, left, right, count, count to the left, count to the right, count to the left, count to the right. <clears throat> so now you can see the error is quite high here. It's jumping, this is a number 0 to 100, so that's, it's getting up to about 50 counts of error. But let's, So the, here are the parameters. Proportional gain, derivative gain, and integral gain are the three main uh, of, of a normal PID loop. You've got the P, the I, and the D. Proportional, derivative, and integral. So what we're going to do is, now, one rule is you should have about four times as much derivative gain as proportional. What derivative is, is it's, it's sensing, it senses the, the target compared to where it is right now. So if it's coming in too fast, it slows it down. If, it, if it's coming in too slow, it speeds it up. The, gain, the proportional gain is just a linear gain to um, of, of error versus position. So the higher the error, the higher the correction of the uh, analog signal. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 500 and 1250, okay, and hit update. Now what it what it does is it sends it stops the uh, time uh, count, uh, scope for a split second and sends the commands and starts it up again. Okay. Now you can see it's tighter than it was. The error is quite a bit lower. Okay. So I'm going to push this up even higher. We're going to push this up to about 750 and push this up to about 2300. Hit update. Okay, it's tighter now. Now, over here you have ways of displaying. Here I'm looking at encoder and step. But the next one is error and step. Okay, so if I click on error and step, red is the error. And you can see the error is, is, is a bump right after it changes direction mostly. Okay, so you can use this one now. This is six, this is in counts, this is 60 counts. So Right, and so it's moving it. The uh, the uh, exerciser is moving at plus and minus about 100 exactly, and you can see the amplitude is 100. So if we we uh, if we decrease this and do update, you can see now it's at 70, and that's right on the 70 counts right there. Okay, so well, I'm going to go with 100, maybe 120. Okay. So what I'm going to do is push this up even more. Go 950. I'm going to go with 950 and threes. See, it's fairly tight. The error is fairly low now. It's mostly only when it changes suddenly. Suddenly changes direction, and it's uh, moving. But if I slow the exerciser down. You can see the error is very low. The faster you run it, the harder it bangs back and forth. There's going to be a little bit of settling. But you can see the settling, if we go back to 4, the settling actually is quite fast. And I'm going to lower the derivative gain here, and you'll see with the effect. So I'm going to lower it down here, hit update, and you'll see the ringing. See, after it changes direction, there is ringing this long. I'm going to actually... 
Oh, actually, I'll bring this one. See, you can see the ringing. On the change of direction, the ringing lasts quite long. And you can feel it. You can feel a bounce. So, that's what the derivative does. It causes a settling, increases a settling. And you can go as high as, uh, on the derivative, I think I have it set as high. You can go as high as four or 5,000. Hit update. And you can see how tight it got. I updated, so I'm rating 950 now and 3,700. And it, it one little ring and it's done. It, it settles. Okay. Now if I lower the drip, uh, proportional, So you can play around with these to get the, the tuning you like. Okay. Now the loop time is an important one as well. Um, the motor likes certain uh, sample rates. Now what the loop time is, it's how many times a second it samples the error and does a correction. Okay. So let's say the lower this number it is, the slower it is, and this number goes from 1 to 15. The high at 15, it's at 4,000 corrections a second. At down around 1, it's around 200 corrections a second. Now, you can see I changed it to 8, which is a, a mid uh, speed of looping, of uh, sampling rate, and you can see, you can hear the tone difference, but it's ringing more, it's not as stable because it's oversampling. Now, I'll bring it up 9, 10, and you can see it's very unstable. Because what's happening is the motor can only move so fast, and if you're correcting uh, too many times, you're basically telling the motor, go this way, that way, this way, that way, and the motor is, is shaky. You're overcorrecting. It's like if a turtle was walking slowly down a, a road. You can't yell commands at the turtle a thousand times a second. It, it'll just create noise. So you're better to, to sample it at a slower rate. So the larger the motor, the larger the inertia and mass, the slower you want your sampling time. On a really fast, a very light, high-speed motor, you can go with the higher speed sampling times. But if we're going to drop this right down to about, and you can see, look, at, look how well it's tuned now. Almost no error at all, except on the correction. Yeah. So we don't want the sampling time to be as slowest. We want it higher to be an acceptable rate. And that way, when the machine speeds up or is really moving fast, it's, it's doing its job too. All right, so I find around this range is a good number of sampling, okay? Another parameter that's important is the feed forward parameter. Uh, a step and direction drive uh, is kind of like a stubborn mule. If you're pulling it with a rope, you have to pull it along and it, the faster you pull it, the tighter the rope gets and you're, you're pulling it along and it wants to get behind you. The feed forward gives it a push from behind. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook up a step and direction uh, pulse generator here. You can also just do it with jogging with Mach 3 or something. And you can see while the motor, now this is just a 555 timer with a variable uh, potentiometer and a few uh, speed controls here. So <clears throat> I can run the motor back and forth with the direction switch as well. All it is is the four wire connection. I use this for testing a lot of drives. So, the faster you can notice that when it's stopped, the error is very low. Okay, But the faster you run it, the higher the error count gets because it's, it's lagging behind. Okay? So, with the feed, so what we'll do, we're going to run it here. I'm going to increase the feed forward parameter. Start out with like 50. Update. And the error went down a little bit. I'm going to increase this. 
error is going lower. So we can just click on error here. All right, and that's the error. Bring it up. The error is on the negative side. And now the error is moving up. See the error is there. Originally with the setting of zero, it was very. It was approximately uh, 30 motor counts. So bringing it up. It's about, it's running close to zero. We'll bring it up a little bit more. Now it's running pretty close along the zero mark. So I'm going to slow it down. As I slow it down, it stays there. Change the direction. Check it on both directions. Yeah. So that's the feed forward parameter. What it helps. Uh, keep the error on target the faster the motor runs. Now I've got a few other parameters here. I'm going to stop the exerciser. Okay. Now, here you have the trip limits. Okay. We're going to change this number to uh, 30. All right and then hit update. That's the hard trip. What it means is if I tweak the twist it more than 30 error counts it trips. And when it tripped the red LED came on here. That's the fault. And uh, it, it disabled the drive. Okay. So this is your trip range. Now the soft trip the soft range doesn't work on the S2L. That's for the, my other Viper drives. But the parameter is just there. So I'm going to enable it again. Okay. And then if I if I push it, as soon as it hits that 30 counts, it trips. All right. Okay. And what we have is one, two, three, four, five, five flashes, which means uh, out of range trip. Okay. So I'm going to enable it. Now another fault is under voltage fault. If I take this off, we got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's a four flash. So four flash is under voltage five is is trip. Now other parameters are the integral gain. And you can see here it's sitting here with an error of two counts. Okay, so if I the integral gain tries to correct errors over time. So if it sees the error, let's say positive, it'll increase a negative uh, correction until the error is low. So every loop it adds a correction until it finally brings it in. But what happens is it can it can suddenly release that correction so there'll be a little bump afterwards but so I'm going to bring this one up and I hit update and you can see it's bringing the air right down to one anyway now the inter integral gain can uh, cause a little instability so I only allow the number to go up to a, a total of maximum of 12 on this drive anyway because that's all you really need or else it can cause you trouble. If you have this number going too high it can cause you trouble and you can't figure out why you can't tune the drive. Okay. Now another one is the balance. Now let's say you have a on a z-axis you have a heavy weight. The motor is always loaded to the uh, to the downforce and so the drive is always trying to lift the, the motor. So that would mean it was always pushing one way on the amplifier, on the positive or the negative. But you can play with that number if you have a, a, a system where you've got more load on one way than the other. Or you have an amplifier that isn't, isn't uh, at zero volts, doesn't, uh, isn't sitting at zero velocity. So on Viper Tune, you have some other buttons and functions here. You've got, like I showed, you got the read the drive function. 
After you do an update, update and you're happy with your parameters, you can do burn to drive and what that does is it stores it in the flash so the, next, the drive will always have those parameters even if it's turned off and turned on. You can uh, disable drive, see it's an disable, enable, enable. Now one handy feature of ViperTune, the new version of ViperTune, is testing your uh, analog connection. So what I've added here is a manual output. So right now the motor is locked. Okay. If I click on so what this does is allow me to directly control the output of the D to A converter. Not turns off the closed loop and then um, so if I click on this my motor's free now. Okay. And I can in this uh, little spin button here I can set let's say I'll set 10% of my D to A output and this this allows me to output it at positive, output it negative. So at 10% D to A output I can turn the motor okay, left, turn the motor right it's the same number, it just puts a minus sign in front of it there's 20% or 18% So this is good for helping you set up your uh, your amplifier and get the gain right. Because you might want to adjust on your amplifiers, you'll need to maybe adjust your gain setting to match uh, your machine for tuning. Because let's say you had a motor that's that can spin 5,000 RPM, but it's on a machine that the maximum that motor's ever going to spin is about 1,000 RPM. So you don't want the 10 volt... 10, like amplifiers have a plus and minus 10 volt input. You don't want your 10 volt to be 5,000 RPM on that machine because the maximum you'd ever want to run it would be 1,000. So you would reduce your gain on the amplifier so that when the step to linear is outputting 100% that motor might be moving um, 1,500 RPM to give it some headroom. Okay, So you can use this to set up your amplifier, it also can check. It goes in the, it goes plus and minus, and that way you know the the step to linear is able to control that amplifier. Now, another type. I'm hooked up another type of drive here to show how it works. I, it's a brushless DC drive and a uh, brushless DC motor. And this is a very uh, simple uh, brushless DC drive. It's not a sine wave drive, it's just a trapezoidal drive. So these are very, these are really known to be hard to tune. But, um, so what you got here is got an MCG um, motor, a 1B34004 motor with a thousand count encoder, I think it is on the end. And this this Copley drive off eBay, uh, it's a uh, 5221CE, and um, all I'm using is uh, the uh, the analog input, uh, no tachometer. I don't have a tachometer hooked up to it, and this drive does, can have the option to use an encoder as the tachometer, but it doesn't have it, so there's no tachometer, and this drive just takes off the slightest bit of plus or minus and the drive just takes off but it's tuned here with the step to linear so I'm going to disable the drive and you can just see if I set this woo and here I I'm using the uh, direct analog and you can just see this thing really wants to go so that's a brushless DC motor and you can see that it's not balanced. It wants to go... There is a balance adjustment here. I can't quite do it though. And you can see it wants to go one direction when there's no voltage connected. And there, there's one direction. There's the other direction. So it really goes. So I'm going to hit Enable Drive. 
Oh, it, it faulted. Um, because I have to enable the, the step to linear before I actually enable the drive, or it runs away. So I will disable the drive, enable the step to linear, and then I will click it on, and now it's holding again. Okay. So this is notoriously a hard drive to tune, but here it is tuned fine with the step to linear. Now if I start this, there's the exerciser going back and forth. So that's a trapezoidal brushless DC drive with no tachometer being in closed loop here. And these things are, these are va fast motors. So you could, uh, you can use the step to linear with some uh, surplus eBay uh, drives and motors with no tachometer. But I mean, it, with a tachometer, it would be better because you're going to get smoother control, a smoother velocity, and it's going to be more stable with a tachometer because the drive has ability to for a tachometer input, and it, it puts that into the uh, its own gain loop. Now. This drive can either be, I think it can be set for current mode or voltage mode, but here I'm just using voltage mode, I think. Here we'll speed it up. Oh, it was on 4. I'll, I'll reduce the velocity here so it can really... And you can see the air is extremely low still. And I reduced the gain settings quite a bit on this. You can see it. It's a little out. Of, it needs. I'm going to try the. Uh, there, it's running at a higher loop speed too. Seven. It likes it. Oh yes. Because it's such a low inertia motor, the higher loop time, the faster loop time works better with this type of motor. Oh yeah. So this is a very responsive system. Here, we're going to slow this. We're going to reduce this Okay, update. And you can see how fast it is. And we will increase this. And the error is still pretty low. This error is in the four times multiplied error counts. So it's it, it's it like let's say if this was a thousand line encoder, it multiplies it by four, so that would be four thousand line counts, and that's what you're seeing in these numbers. You're seeing the the magnified uh, account. So. If you're seeing a, a, an error of four, that really means it's only one line count. Right. So that's the end of my video for the step to linear. And if you have any questions, email me at larkin at storm.ca and I'll try to answer your problems. Thank you.